Some weeks ago on this programme, we featured the broadcasting work of the late Robert Fisk, who died earlier this month in Dublin. In the course of researching that feature, we came across this exchange between Robert Fisk and Pat Kenny, which we did not then have time for, nor was it particularly mainstream, but I thought I should include it uh, this morning. Fisk was such a prolific author and so well regarded that all of his books were eagerly anticipated and indeed proved to be bestsellers. In one particular case, he was surprised to find from a friend in Egypt that a local publisher seemed to have published a new book by Fisk about Saddam Hussein, but with an implausible title and written in Arabic. Here's the exchange. Moving on to uh, another area, and that is your very successful <coughs> book, Saddam Hussein, From Birth to Martyrdom, by <laughs> Robert Fisk, which is available in all good B Beirut bookshops. No, in, in uh, <laughs> Egyptian bookshops, uh, Pat. Yes, well, <laughs> you know the story. Uh, basically, I got rung up by a, um, a, a bookseller in Cairo whom I knew, and she came on the phone to me in Beirut and said, Robert, did you write a book called Saddam Hussein, From Birth to Martyrdom? And I said, no. He said, well, I've got it in my hand, and it's got your name on it. It's in Arabic, but my name is there in golden script. So I decided that I'd better go down to Cairo and at least alert the Egyptian public I didn't write this wretched thing. It's a very thin, transparent sort of book, and it glosses over uh, Saddam's worst war crimes. So it's not actually something I particularly want to be associated with. So I, I got into Egypt, went to the publishing company named in the book, which turned out it was genuine, but it hadn't published the book, that was for sure. And then I went to the censorship offices of the Egyptian government, because to get any book on sale in good old democratic Egypt, you, you need the government censor to clear it. And there was this huge emporium full of papers, books, everything from Islamic treatises to porno magazines with this little man sitting at a very old dusty computer in the middle. And I said, Robert Fisk, Saddam Hussein from birth to martyrdom, can you look it up? And he did, and he said, there's no name of who asked um, f to have this book published, but we do have an address for the man who arrived. Um, I already suspected it was a well-known forger called Magdi Hussein, um, but I did get the address. It was number 5 Abu Ramadan Street, I think, and I jumped in the taxi, you know, almost Dickensian-like, because <laughs> this part of Cairo is rather Dickensian. It's all donkey carts and donkeys pushing you off the road. And I got there to find that the address was an underground mosque. Indeed, there was a funeral going on and a corpse um, in the mosque when I arrived. Uh, but at that point, and I got the Boab, the, the man who who looks the doorman outside the apartment block behind the mosque, and he said, there's no publisher here, no printer. At which point this um, middle-aged, very well-dressed lady came out of this awful slum building, and I said, hold on a second, do you happen to know um, if there was a publisher ever in this building? And she said, no, there isn't, except for that nice Mr. Magdi Husseini who, who <laughs> left here last January. And, and then she said, wonderful moment for all journalists, but he works in the bookshop just around the corner, you uh. see. So I went down pushing donkeys out of the way, got around the corner, uh, Macbuller's shop, and there... Uh, in the window was Robert Fisk's great epic on Saddam Hussein, in Arabic, of course. And standing in the doorway was a man in a yellow sort of smoking jacket with black um, velvet lapels and smoking a cigarette on a holder, whom I strongly suspected was Mr. Magdi Hussein. And I went inside and formally bought a copy of my book. And there was a big pile there. And I said, how many of these copies have you sold? He said, we've sold about a hundred so far. And I said, well, at 30 Egyptian pounds, you owe me 3,000 Egyptian pounds. That's my name on the top, and I didn't write it. To which his reply with a huge smile was, well, if you didn't write it, I'm not going to pay you any money. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, there's a bit extra you won't know about since I wrote the story. I was in Dublin a couple of weeks ago when I got a call from Magdi Hussein, the forger, yeah. <laughs> saying that he was he was being hounded by the Egyptian government. It had some effect, the story, you see, apart from blocking sales of the book. And he wanted uh, my word that I wasn't going to sue him. And I said, I'm not interested in suing you. I think it's actually very funny, but I'd much prefer if you put someone else's name on your next volume, you see. And he said, uh, well, he said, I'm going to put an advertisement into al Ahram newspaper, which is a very large circulation, pro-government, pro mubarak newspaper in Egypt, in which I'm going to say, you're not going to sue me. And I said, no, that's fine, you can do that, it's true. <laughs> Two days later, al Haram carried this beautiful big advertisement, about half a page on the inside page of the paper, <laughs> which said that Robert Fisk praises this new book, <laughs> Saddam Hussein, which he wrote. So you never win you in Egypt. Win. You, know? you cannot win. <laughs> no. Well, aphorisms are sometimes special to particular cultures or languages. I'm uncertain about Egypt, but that's a very good example of never judging a book by its cover. We've no idea of the print run or the profits or the impact of that book, but I thought you'd be interested in those exchanges. 
between Robert Fisk and Pat Kenny.